Joining us right now, last time we saw him, we were in a hotel room and we were one of the few, we were one of the proud, we were one of the honored to get a peek at the chain. And now we continue our road of uh, interviews, visits, and uh, all kinds of fantastic stuff. The Red Velvet Lounge brought to you by Jiffy Lube. It's Kevin Herger. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Great. Great. I mean, you're doing good because I'm looking at the injury report for tomorrow <laughs> that, ju- that just came out. And uh, tomorrow, tonight, whatever, we're recording. And it says that you have a right. Do we ever figure this out? Is this right? Popliteus? Popliteus? Do you know how to pronounce it? I think it's Popliteus. Right? Do, do, do Dave and I have one? Yeah. Yes. You said what? Does it what? Do we have one? What is that? What is that? Uh, you guys do have one. It's like a muscle <laughs> bottom end of your hamstring, behind the back of your knee. It's, uh, you know, everybody's got one. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. So you're injury managing your right popliteus, and then De'Aaron and Trey and Davion and Malik and Keegan and DeMontis are all, they're not managing injuries. They just have various things. So uh, I don't know. It, it, it certainly smells like you're a game time decision tomorrow. Yeah, we will. Um, I think we're we're game time decision. A lot of us have some things we're dealing with, been dealing with. You know, yeah. after that tough back to bad back to back on the road. Uh, you know, tough flight, a little bumpier than usual. I think. Yeah. You know, jarred a couple body parts different ways, and uh, so I, we'll, we'll see. I think there's a couple of us that are game time for for tomorrow. I know when we talked last week, there were some goals that were still in play. 50, it can happen, but you have to win both. And you can win with with other guys if they play. But um, does that still feel like a, a tangible mark that you guys would really like like to achieve? Yeah, I mean, that wasn't necessarily one of our goals going into the season. 50 is a nice whole number that, that looks good on a record. Um, and it would be nice to get there. That means we were to handle business uh, these last two games of the year. But um, – you know, where we are in these standings, uh, you know, we need some help to Memphis to get up to that two spot. Um, unfortunately, don't completely control our own destiny anymore. So uh, it'd be great to get to 50. But, you know, for where we are in this playoffs, uh, you know, I think for the most part, we could be locked in at that three. I, I, I know you're questionable for the game. I'm actually surprised, you know, and we're always honest with each other here. I'm surprised you're not even suspended for the entire playoffs after that massive hit you took to the face yesterday. That honestly, Kevin, I was ashamed of you for being hit in the face that badly. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, honestly, that was a situation. I haven't been kicked out of a game before. Um, that was going through my head. It was in the moment. You, know, you were pissed, dude. I know what you have to say to get one T, so I deserve the one. And yeah. then you definitely have to step it up to get the second one. Um, and so I was right on the border of making that decision of whether I want to go down that route, uh, but decided decided against it, which was a smart thing to do. Can you explain not what happened, but actually the challenge? Because Dave and I tried to understand it. I, I said, if Coach Brown's challenging whether or not you pushed off, you did, but after you clearly – got hit in the face, so I, I didn't understand the challenge, but then you guys won the challenge, yet the only reason you got a technical is because you got poked in the face. So I, how did they explain that to you guys? Yeah, so I think we challenged the foul. So we challenged my foul. They called an offensive foul. We challenged it because I was the one that got fouled. Um, but I guess they don't rescind the T. So I'm not sure if that's – you know, I, got, I, don't, I don't know where that is in the rule book. I didn't honestly, I didn't expect it to get rescinded. It was just kind of a nice thing to go up to the referees afterwards and hear him apologize and then me complain more about how I still have the T, kind of knowing what the answer was. Um, but at least they got it. You know, at least they switched the call. But at the end of the day, they got a call wrong. The other team got a point, and we in the end got penalized for it, which doesn't feel like it makes too much sense. Oh, dude, the T. Well, I, I'd be surprised if the league office didn't rescind it. Number one, at some point, also, like if you, the whole reason you got the T was for arguing the call that got overturned, and therefore, had they made the right call, you wouldn't have gotten the T. So, correct. How is it that you don't get the T and the point rescinded right there? I feel like that's some weird loophole. I know, like they definitely shouldn't have been able to take the free throw, but. It does. That's what it feels like is a loophole. I expect to get it rescinded, uh, especially since they got it wrong. So 
we'll find out we'll see how good my agent is but um <laughs> hopefully it's not affecting my uh my pockets too much even though on the court it was that was a big point in that moment yeah since we talked in Port uh, in Portland, you guys had that game at New Orleans, which looked like to me was one of your most just complete performance. Offense, defense, the depth of the team, the shot making, the stops when you needed it. Um, how did that feel playing in it? Did, did that feel close to accurate as one of your most uh, complete games as a team? Yeah, it did. It did. Uh, you know, especially the way you know losing at home to San Antonio kind of I think put a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Uh, you know, being able to clinch our position in that game, uh, continue to gain ground on Memphis as a two seed. And just the way we played that game, uh, a lot of us were awful. I was awful, especially on the defensive side of the court. Just didn't come ready to play in that game. And uh, you know, Mike has been talking about for the last couple of weeks is building the right habits and can you continue to get better for the playoffs. Like we need to, you know, we may not be playing for to get in anymore, but we need to make sure that we're doing all the right things to be ready when that time comes and uh so we had a really productive film session after that game in new orleans and just i think our sense of urgency going to that new orleans game and uh our mindset was right and it felt like honestly it felt like playoff intensity to start the game you know maybe not the crowd uh new orleans is in a weird spot in their season right now but everything other than the crowd like the speed of the game the physicality of the game i think the urgency of both teams starting that game in that first quarter was what you're going to see in the playoffs and um I thought we handled it well for the most part. You know, they came out hot. We didn't make shots, but we stuck with it. And we really we won that game in large part on the defensive end. And you know, Keegan got hot for us in that second half. You know, Fox did his thing, and we we put together enough offense to win. But you know, our our attention and our physicality on the defensive side of the ball and the speed that our offense played at for really the whole course of that game, I think wore them out. You know, they kind of tried to come out and run with us, and Mike didn't call a timeout. Um, to be honest, I expected him to. There was a couple of plays I think we got down eight or ten early, and but we were playing so up and down that uh, we wore them out. You know, they definitely didn't play with the same speed for the rest of the game, and uh, we got them to play our game. So it was. It was a complete game. Um, just slowly over the course of the game, just just kept extending the lead. It felt like they couldn't get anything going. They talked about our physicality and our speed in the half court, and uh, you look up at the end of the game, and, and we were up by twenty against a team that really needed that win. Uh, that had been playing really well up to that point. And so that definitely felt really good. Red Velvet Lounge brought to you by Jeffrey Lube. Kevin Herter with us. That is like, and I know we've talked about this before. I don't want to belabor the point. That's like the strangest thing. I have no explanation for this part of this team this year. Like no disrespect to San Antonio, but come on, you know, and that's at home. And then New Orleans is one of the hottest teams in the NBA. And you go in there and just run them off the floor on their home court. And so Jason and I were talking early in the week. We're like, these guys have a better record on the road than at home, which I don't even know if that's ever happened uh, around here. Obviously, the fans are insane. You guys love playing there. But, like, maybe we start booing or, or during warm-ups or, like, Mike puts you in a hotel. Like, we're trying to think of tricks to, to figure it out because I know you guys are trying to do the same thing and figure it out. Yeah, but it's funny. Like, I feel like we actually have a decent road crowd when we go on the road. Like, yeah. we always have Kings fans out there, and especially behind our bench. Uh so I don't know. I mean, that's – I like to remind people, you know, it's it's still the NBA. If you don't come in ready to play, a team is going to jump you from the start. It doesn't matter what their record is. Uh, you see the same thing happen in Denver a couple times, honestly, in the past week or so. They haven't come ready to play, and you know, they get beat at Houston by 20. Um, so that happens. You have to be ready for every team. You have to be prepared. Uh, I don't think we – and everyone will admit this on our team. I don't think we were – you know, necessarily prepared and ready to play that game against San Antonio, maybe took them for granted a little bit, thought it was going to be easier on our home court. Um, and they jumped us. You know, they played well. They had guys who, to be honest, we hadn't heard of uh, put up 22 in the first half against us and making shots, and we had to change our scouting report, and McDermott gets going late. And so that's that's the NBA. You know, every team has talent. Uh, every team has, especially at this point, guys trying to prove themselves are going to continue to play hard. And uh, – you know, we were definitely ready to play in New Orleans, and I thought we were we were ready to play in Dallas. But um, you know, at home we just didn't handle that the right way. But I think if if you're in a playoff setting, uh, I think we'll be ready to go, and the home court will definitely be an advantage for us. How about the playoffs? You're on the verge here, whether you're three seed, two seed, you don't know who you're going to play yet. But you've been there, you've experienced it. You've been in Game Sevens. You know what the the intensity can be. Home road series, moving on, adjustments over the next week or so for the guys that haven't played. 
in a playoff series yet? What what are kind of the, some of the things you're going to remind them of to of what to expect? Yeah, you know, we just got to be our attention to detail with everything. You just got to be at a really high level. Uh, I think everyone on our team will be ready to play. I don't think we'll have to have some big rah rah speech to get us pumped up and motivated and ready to come out and play hard and play aggressive. Uh, it's just, you know, the playoffs, especially if you're first time playing it, it can, it can be overwhelming. You know, it's the, the atmosphere of the game, like the, you can feel the heightened, um, just the, the level that you're playing at, you know, it's on TV, it's national, it's, you know, you're in the playoff round. Like there's just an extra sense of urgency that goes with playing in those games. And, you know, my first playoff experience was on the road at MSG. So I was like thrown into the fire right away. Um, and so you have to be ready for it. You know, it's, it, you're on the biggest stage and it's just, you're prepared for it if you're not. And, you know, these last two games, I think we played has, has been a good tune up for that. Uh, you know, both playoff caliber teams I know Dallas hasn't played well, but you know, honestly, that's, they should be a playoff caliber type of team. Um, and we've looked good. I think we've been ready to play in those games and weren't able to get it done in Dallas, but I think we're on our way. We're almost there. We're almost ready. Just the rest of our team just locking in and, and being ready for scouting reports, being ready to, to adjust. Uh, but obviously, personally, we got to be able to play well. And um, you, know, you, you never really know how you're going to react till you're on that stage. You know, one more note about that Dallas game. It's hard to be mad at that at all. It's not like – that's not like the San Antonio thing. I mean, you guys looked ready. You were, you were leading for a good portion. And I got to ask you, on the floor, you're locked in you're not in awe anymore you've played against the best of the best of the best but is there any point whether it's during or after you go back and look at some of the stuff Kyrie did in the fourth and just like dude that was absolutely inhuman and don't don't you just sometimes have to tip your cap you do I mean Kyrie hit over the whole course of his career he's a tough shot maker you, okay. you know he's gonna do that uh he can really get hot for him I thought our defense on him really wasn't too bad. Maybe a couple times we lost him in transition or didn't pick him up high enough, and he hit tough shots. Um, you got to tip your cap in some regards, but yeah, we were the aggressive team in the first half. I think we came out and punched them in the mouth, and they came out in the third quarter, and they kind of flipped the script. You know, They were the more aggressive team. They came out and kind of punched us, and next thing you know, we're in the fourth quarter in a ball game, a tie game, and um, you know, Kyrie obviously got it going late, and that seemed to be the difference, but – I think they came out better in that third quarter than we did. And uh, yeah, that was really kind of the difference in the game. When Sunday's game ends in Denver, you'll pretty much, you'll know who you're going to play that. Is it like locked in right away on the six seed, whoever it might be, or whatever team you're playing just over the flight home to practice, to film session. Is it that immediate? Like we're in that game in that series mode right away. A hundred percent. You know, that's uh, if people don't know over the course of a whole NBA season, like, our team, we have two coaches assigned to every team in terms of a scouting uh, perspective. You know, we have two coaches that we could be playing on a Saturday night against the Lakers. And there's two coaches on our team that are looking forward five days and are already writing the scouting report for the Denver Nuggets. So like the preparation, and that's for every team in the NBA, the preparation never starts you know, after or going into your next game it's like you finish your game on saturday it's like all right now sunday let's wake up and get ready for our game monday like now the, the game monday has been the preparation started a week ago and um i would imagine we're sitting here right now you know our, our coaching staff or analytics department or front office whoever is working on it already has a full scouting report and already has most of the plays and film and all that cut and picked out for any of the teams that we could see in the playoffs you know that's just how it goes in the nba uh and in, in a lot of ways for college. So as soon as we know who we're playing, I, I guarantee you everything we need to know is going to be shoved, you know, shoved in our face. You get a playoff packet. It's kind of no, a notorious thing. Uh, similar to like an NFL playbook, uh, you get a packet. I guess quarterbacks and offense, they get a full packet at the beginning of the season. They got to learn the playbook. Well, the NBA, that you know, the comp to that is your – your playoff packet, you know, you literally get a booklet that's put in front of you and every stat, everything you need to know on a guy and know on a team is put right in front of your face. And it's your job to learn it and figure it out. And um, I would imagine whenever our last game is and that preparation will start basically right away. Talk to me about bulletin board material. I, there's always these two camps that number one, you're a professional athlete. And at this level, if you need bulletin board material to get pumped up for especially a playoff game, then then what are you doing? On the other hand, 
everything is everything, but motivation is motivation. I know you guys see at least a little bit of, hey, this team wants to play the Kings. The Kings are the weakest. I saw this thing on ESPN today. They said, who's the who, who's the best team in uh, California? And literally, the Kings weren't mentioned. It was like Lakers, Clippers, Warriors. There's obviously disrespect. I know some of that respect has to be earned, but does bulletin board material exist at your level? No, like I feel like for us, none of us, to be honest, really pay attention to that. Uh, I know in our locker room, like we're extremely confident. We've seen what we can do when we're at our best. And you know, we think our best is better than most other teams' best. Um, and so we have that confidence going into it. People have been saying this for all year. We are really going to the last year. I love all the videos that have come out on Twitter of everybody in SAC keeping receipts and pulling this video clip of this guy saying this or this podcast segment of this guy. Like everybody all year has continuously doubted us and we see, continuously feel like we're surprising people and guys jumping on the bandwagon. And how many times have you heard people, oh, well, the Kings might be for real. Hey, they, they might be good this year. And I've heard that a hundred times this year. And all we've done is keep winning. Um, so in our locker room, that hasn't changed. We're as confident as ever. Uh, just ready, obviously, to, to go in. And I think a lot of guys are ready for that first experience playing in the playoffs. You know, last week when we talked to you, you guys were, were – you celebrated the the playoff berth, but not not over the top. That's what you said. It was kind of like, all right, I mean, it's an, an achievement. But how about winning the Pacific Division a couple days later? I mean, based on what Dave just said, I mean, the Clippers, the Warriors, the Suns, uh, the Lakers, just a lot of traditionally good teams, the defending champs, and you are the ones that got through that. Did you guys – celebrate that at all when you uh were crown division champions you know we celebrated it just because there was there's people same with the playoffs that have been a part of this organization that haven't experienced that before and so we wanted to celebrate that because it is a big deal you know it's it's not the end goal um but it's it's a check mark that's you you check off along the journey uh and so making the playoffs is it's a really hard thing to do it's hard to do in this league you have to celebrate it. you have to acknowledge it uh we're not throwing a party of it. We're not standing on scores table and waving our jerseys around. Uh, but, you know, we acknowledged it in the locker room. And the other day when we beat New Orleans to lock up uh, Pacific Division, you know, we had T-shirts made and we celebrated some people in the locker room and then you move on. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I do feel it's important. You have to celebrate those, the little things. Everything can't just be head down business all the time. You have to stop and celebrate sometimes. But, you know, obviously, we know there's there's bigger things we hope to be celebrating for sure. Have you seen some of these betting slips popping up from <laughs> people that bet on the Kings to win the Pacific in the summertime? I have, I have. I know some people personally that that called it too. That uh, back in back in August, were trying to get me to talk about some things, and I'm like, <laughs> put my hands up, like, <laughs> like my brother, I got nothing for you, and now right. they text me like, I told you, I got you guys. <laughs> like, so it's great. It's good to see. You know, people make a lot of money. When your name gets announced for the, I mean, you get announced every night. Your starter, that's that's maybe it wears on you, it wears off on you, I should say. But in the playoffs, is there are there any uh, butterflies knowing going into like game one of a series? You have no idea what's going to happen over the next four, five, six, seven games. But is there any more anticipation for you on on that second season? I think there will be. There's definitely an excitement level, uh, an anticipation. We want to call it just extra adrenaline that's in the building. Uh, the crowd is just so much better in the playoffs. I think, especially in our gym, you know, everybody will be so ready to go and on the edge of their seats that I'm assuming every little thing will be celebrated. And I'll just be so ready to play. You know, you get to that point, you've prepared all week. We'll be practicing against each other all week, just waiting for the moment we can finally get on the court. Kings are in the playoffs. You know, there's going to be an excitement level that uh, will be in the building that I'm sure you know, we'll, we'll be ready to go. You been to Augusta or is that on the bucket list? Have not been to Augusta. It is on the bucket list, though. It's number one for me. I mean, we've talked about it. Well, before. every you know, every year we've been we've been playing. So I was in I was yeah. in Atlanta and same thing. The season was going and we were getting ready for something else. So I wasn't able to make it out. God, that's so lame. That's right. You were in Atlanta and scheduled because obviously I'm sure you could have figured it out connection wise out there. They're gonna get you on, but so your whole career it just you never could make it out up to Augusta, huh? Never would, never was able to make it happen. Unfortunate. I mean, they're tough tickets to come by, yeah. uh, but they are. Yeah, wasn't able to make it out. It's not just what like, did, hey, wake up Saturday, let me go to the Masters, or like it's something you have to prepare for. You have to find the tickets, find the people to go with, and uh, wasn't wasn't able to make it happen. 
what if you had the chance to play it? Would you want to play it as it is, like from the tips and like what every pro has to go through? Uh, I mean, if it was on TV, no, I would embarrass it. <laughs> I said this from the jump. Like, if you were to, if this was like a, a game winning free throw, like, of course, I have confidence I'm going to line stepping up. If I have like a game winning putt, like to win the Masters, I got people, there is no confidence running through my head. It is sitting there and it just like, don't look stupid as you're putting this. And that happens to me on a random Sunday morning with my buddies. Like I can't imagine doing that in front of in front of a crowd. So, uh, in terms of playing from the tips, I played at East Lake. We played from the tips the whole time just to see what it was like to play at that level. Yeah. And for me, distance is never a problem. It's just uh, it's just the East West. It's left to right. Dude, I saw that. Uh, I uh, there's a video out of you and Keegan playing. I forget where, uh, but you guys were out uh, uh, playing around. You, you got the uh, you got a cut going on that drive. I got I got I got everything going on that drive. That was just a good clip. Um, <laughs> like I said, I can get it out there, especially yeah. if it's warmed up. It's just it's gonna spray. And Keegan did the smart thing that day. I think he moved to his three wood, or he was hitting off of the five iron off of the tee because Keegan can get it out, but he's got a big right to left slice. He's a lefty. Yeah, but we're big guys. We're athletes. We can hit it. It's just uh, we got to fine tune some things. Who won? We did actually. Oh, it was it was a team. It was me and Keegan okay. versus it was Loop Golf. Uh, so we we played with some with some people, and this was way earlier in the season. Just all the film is coming out now. That's where people are thinking <laughs> I'm like going to play golf as we're preparing for a playoff run. Uh, this was way back, but oh. we actually we won. Keegan hit a couple big putts. I think the guy four putted on 18 oh. for us to win, and I think Keegan birdied. And um, it was a good day. It was good. We we're talking last Mac. Did he, when he hit that putt, did he just like tear his shirt off and start <laughs> running around the green and freaking out, jumping the lake? He gave a little Tiger Woods fist pump. <laughs> it, we had a little moment because it was high stakes. Like I said, we were yeah. talking all day. There was money on the line. Uh, we were invited to go play against guys who were better than us. We got some strokes, but at the end of the day, we came out with the victory. Took him down. I want to. I want to ask you. We'll finish up this way. I want to ask you the question, Jason. And I. This is a question going around somewhere on the internet. I thought it was interesting. So, the the level of your game right now, you're at Augusta. You're in the tournament Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday or Sunday. But here's here's the trick. You tee off every hole from a hundred yards out. Par five, hundred yards out. Par three, hundred yards out. Everything else is the same. You're a hundred yards out on every single hole. Could you make the cut? I'm going to give respect to pros in their sport. No. Okay. I'll give them the proper respect. I What's would put lying, it. Though? You, you know, you're, you're thinking about it. <laughs> I would. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm not very good from a hundred yards. That's not okay. my strong suit, you know, okay. but it's not like I'd hit little dribblers up to like, I'd be putting it in or around the green. Yeah. I don't trust myself to make putts at a high level consistently on those greens. So these guys are on, and especially par fives, they're on in two or three. Like those guys are, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm duffing one to the right. I'm trying to chip on, and they're in the same spot. So I'll give them respect where it's due. Kind of like asking somebody else, like, hey, if you came in to an NBA game and you only played zone, could I score? It's like, no, you couldn't. No, so I'll give them respect. Yeah. I'll say I wouldn't make the cut. So there you go, Jason. That's that's we. That's a good we, answer. Yeah, we did the same thing. We yeah. we. It, it sounds neat. It sounds, sounds like, good. but you know, listen. I hope your right plitty is is better um, and all good. And you, uh, I'm sorry about the plane ride and the bumpiness and all that. Either way, next time we talk, uh, it's going to be just a couple days before the first playoff game in Sacramento in 16 years, and. Uh, I told everybody, the fans, they need to treat it like they're playing the game. Like, hydrate, you know, <laughs> eat a good breakfast. Don't don't blow your wad in the first quarter type of thing. So we're all kind of – we're basically all in this together, Kevin. I'll say this too. Show up early. You know, there's uh, – when we come out at 17 or 18 on the clock, I've been in arenas where the place is full and people are standing. That's all I'll say. I've been in arenas. So I hope it's not a – it's not like an event. Hey, let's take a little date night to go to a playoff game. Like, no, this is the real deal. This is where you lose your voice. This is where you get kicked out. This is where you get a little sweaty and you might take your shirt off midway through the game. This is that kind of atmosphere. It's getting nasty. 
Oh, okay. challenge. Love it. <laughs> the red velvet lounge. Everybody's going to be naked in the game. <laughs> with, the, with the deep hog change. Just yes. Added on the bare chests. Oh, man. All right, buddy. Well, uh, keep practicing on that rim behind you. We always appreciate your time. Good luck to your Papalidius, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon. I will. Sounds good, guys. Thank you. Thank that you. is Kevin Herter. We will be right back. 